Tall Tale TV. Mr. Eckwood's Unfortunate Summoning by G. Connor Salter. You didn't have to rip them apart like that. Alistair looked up from the corpse and sneered. Why not? I spent ten weeks hiding in her, waiting for this moment. I'll be damned if I can't enjoy it. I looked from the corpse to the seance candles and wax pentagram drawing that dominated the floor. Another body, which used to be Lionel Eckwood of the Queen's Royal Engineer Corps, lay a foot from the bed. It was a hideous sight, especially in a child's bedroom. Alistair walked to the bed, knocking toys and books over with his wings as he passed. I wondered vaguely why Eckwood had left so many of his daughter's things in this room, as if by not changing anything, he could bring her back. He certainly wanted that enough to try and talk to her, I thought as I looked again at the first corpse. Until about two minutes ago, it had been Madame Adrienne, one of Alistair's favorite spiritualist pawns. A long speaking tube hung above the bed, something Eckwood had installed so the child could talk to him as he worked. Aren't you going to stop me? Alistair asked as he grabbed the tube and uncapped it. I gripped my teeth, wishing I could remind him of the last time our fists clashed. Eckwood summoned you and gave you permission to be here, I replied reluctantly. Which means I can't stop you, but I can certainly follow you and find out what exactly you're planning. Well, follow fast he said, and then disappeared into the tube. I picked it up and felt the cold rush of air as my body shrunk to the size of a pea and shot into the rubber tunnel. Come along now, don't get lost, Alistair called gleefully as he flew around a bend. I launched forward, forcing myself to fly neck and neck with him as he soared. The tunnel was black as pitch but I'd learned to fly with my other senses a long time ago. Alistair had flown without any light for even longer. We soared up and then down, around various bends, and then down again, up once more, and my wings almost cracked as I braked sharply. Alistair sailed a few more inches and collided with whatever it was blocking us. The tunnel shuddered as he crashed to the bottom. I stifled a chuckle as Alistair pulled himself up, glared at me, and then hovered forward to examine the plug. Then he raised one fist and pounded on it. The plug trembled and then slid forward. Another push and it rolled out of the tunnel. Alistair bounded out of the opening and landed on the floor full size again. He absent-mindedly brushed some lint off his shoulders. Never cared for these filthy tubes, he muttered. He walked forward a few steps, giving me just enough room to land. I watched as he moved around the room, looking at all the half-finished projects, prototypes, and sketches covered in fine dust. Eckwood had barely worked on anything since his daughter's funeral. Ah, here we are, Alistair said, gazing at a machine I took to be a long tube covered in valves and switches with a box attached. The box itself was mostly composed of burnished steel with a set of bellows on one side. You know that's merely a prototype, I said. There's no way your master can be sure it will work. True. Alistair said as he unclipped a rucksack from his back and carried it over his head, careful not to tear it on his horns. But I've no doubt our engineers can easily make a working one. We just need the design first. And what then? I countered. So you have a gun, a very clever gun that can kill a thousand people in an instant. But still, 
Only a gun. Do you honestly think it will help you any in the final battle? Oh, it'll be useless in that particular fight. Alistair replied, wrapping the device in cheesecloth and then carefully slipping it into the rucksack. But who knows? With a little tinkering, it could become something quite interesting. It might help that little skirmish that's been waiting to happen in Bosnia. A chill ran down my back. For a second, I saw riots in the streets, buildings collapsing, and men rising from trenches across Europe, only to be mowed down by lightning-fast weapons that spewed smoke. You cannot be serious. Alistair laughed. Oh, <laughs> you really are so delectably innocent. He slung the rucksack over his back, careful to avoid his wings, and then tightened the strap. He turned and gave me a mocking grin. Enjoy the peace, Michael. It never seems to last long. He disappeared with a rush of wind, leaving nothing but the musty smell of black powder. I reached over my shoulder and fingered my sword's handle. War, it seemed, was once again on the horizon. G. Connor Salter has written for numerous publications, including national publications like Christian Communicator, He's also written, acted, and directed several short films with the media company Robotic Flyers Productions. And his first book, Sunrise Over Beijing, was released in March 2018 on Amazon. One of his biggest achievements has been contributing to the Canadian publication Area of Effect, which made him an internationally published writer. If you would like to learn more about G. Connor Salter, he can be found on his website, gcsalter.wordpress.com, or on Twitter, at gcsalter. Thanks for listening. If you want to hear more stories like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and sign up for the weekly newsletter. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.